Hey everybody, I've been trying to film this video now for a couple of days and for about 45 minutes at this point in time and this is it, this is the last attempt. I'm, if this isn't it, this is it. I wanna talk about how, you know, if someone wants to get out of a job or start a new career or something, or take a leap of faith to learn a new skill, to put a, a risk, you know, maybe put money out there to buy equipment, to learn something that you may not be able to do, but it could also be the thing that turns into a future thing for you that could change the perspective of your life. I mean, who knew that eating a spicy slice pastry for lunch one day, 15, 20 years ago, or however long ago it was, would lead to me being called spicy every day for 10 years, for the past 10 years. Um, tiny, tiny decisions have massive implications and you don't necessarily realise that until later down the line. It's like the butterfly effect, as they say. The, the point I want to get across here is that, as I say, if you want to start a new, if you want to get out of your job, start a new job, start a new skill, it's important to do the research, it's important to be smart, it's important to try, you know, don't quit one job before you've got the next one, is something that I was always taught. Uh, but I also learned that being in a job is one of the number one reasons why you haven't found the next job, because you don't have time to find that next job. Uh, you also don't have the inclination to find that next job, because comfortable in your current job, even though you hate it, is still less uncomfortable than quitting not having guaranteed money income and trying to convince another person out there that you're worthy for them to, to employ you and to give you their money, to take you on board. Um, and a lot of people, as I say, like I did, you prepared and you prepare and you prepare and you learn as much as you possibly can. And then you're waiting for a signal or you're waiting for the time to go. There is no time to go. There is no signal in most cases. Sure, maybe in some cases there are, maybe you've been starting a business and all of a sudden sales have exploded and now's the time to to buckle down do you realize that look if i want to scale this i'm going to have to stop doing that put money into this and hope that it turns around um, the, the finding the braveness or finding the the will or finding that step the push to click you over the step to make you do that thing it isn't a real thing it's just a combination of things i mean when i quit my job as a chef i've been doing it for years i hated it I wanted to leave and continue doing YouTube. Uh, I had a little bit of money, money left in my back pocket from basically from a crash, some claim money from the injuries I had from it. And I had some time off work. I went back to work and one of the people who worked there hated it probably more than me. I'm just like, for Christ's sake, mate, why don't you just leave? Well, anyway, I, I went on a holiday. I came back and he sounded completely the same. And I was like, look, I'm going to be him. I'm going to be him if I don't leave. I walked into that office, I got a piece of paper, I wrote my resignation right there, gave it to them and said, I'm done, I'm going. And I'd been waiting years to make that decision. What caused it? Me realizing that he was unhappy? I knew he was unhappy. I knew that it wouldn't. It isn't a real thing. It's just a moment that you go, right, it's now. And you can make that moment whatever you want it to be. It's risky doing, jumping towards something you want to do where you have to invest into it, you have to put trust in yourself and things like that is tricky and difficult. But the number one thing that holds everyone back is not money or the time or oh, things aren't right right now. It's just not doing it. You know, you want to get better at drawing? Draw. But I'm not very good at it. Just draw. Just keep drawing. Keep scribbling and drawing and eventually you'll get better at it. Playing guitar, you know, you, you just keep trying everything. You just keep doing it. Um, and it doesn't matter how much you learn, like for instance, when I taught myself TIG welding, at the point I touched a TIG welder for the first time, I knew all about different types of TIG welders, the different materials like you can and can't use, like the different, um, the electrodes and all of the ins and outs, a lot of detail from watching lots of YouTubers who are qualified experienced people who do this as an everyday job, or at least it's their passion, and they're passing on that information and teaching others. And because I have a brain that works the way it does, I absorb lots of information on lots of different subjects very easily. So I knew how to TIG weld, but my hands had never done it. And trying to get that mental ability in your head through your hands is difficult. And if it isn't an instantaneous thing, people very often are put off and go, well, I can't do it, so I can't do it, I'm not gonna try. And then, you know, for that reason, they're not gonna try in the first place. They're not gonna invest and try, like buying a TIG welding machine to find out whether you can do it or not. I've done lots of these steps throughout my life, you know, quitting my job, starting up the metalworks. If you don't know about the things, I've in previous versions of the video, I've gone into all sorts of details. 
scrap metal art, just say that much. It was a great success. I really loved doing it, but I realized it wasn't scalable. I couldn't push it to the things the next step in the size of the area that I had and realized to do that, I'd need a much bigger amount of space, which mean, make, would mean making more money. And at that time, I was pretty much down to my last, you know, rent's money, uh, month's rent, because I'd pushed and pushed and pushed into it and just hoped that it'd work out. And it, it just didn't work out like I would have hoped. But also that's because YouTube was going through a really bad time. You know, when I started YouTube, YouTube was a, it was a great place. It was a reasonable place to try and earn some cash. And I actually, I'd say that right now, it's been more stable, this job, than a normal job because of COVID and stuff. And so for the practical things that I would do because of the type of person that I am, uh, I would most likely have had a lot of problems with work with COVID, but because I've been doing what I do now, it's not been an issue. Unrelated. The answer is just do it, but be smart about it. This is the thing. I'm not saying to you like, you're like, I'm gonna quit my job and I'm gonna go and do this without any preparation, without maybe buying equipment for a while, testing your abilities in that thing or whatever. Um, but everyone, the thing that holds, I wanted to, I basically want to make a video that helped the most people in the simplest possible way. And what I will tell you is this, from my experience, the number one thing that stops someone getting from here to there is not the difficulty of learning the ta challenge or anything like that, or the task or the skill. It's their willingness to do it. Not only are you going to have to willingly do that step, you're also going to have to be willing to work a lot. Now I'm talking about, in my context, I'm self-employed. So most self-employed people are watching this understand when I say like, when did you last have a day off? No, 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 no. When did you really have a day off last that you didn't do anything work related? Anything, even checking emails. It's, it's, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, I know. Um, and also the hours that you work when you're self-employed. Like for instance, if I work out how much money I earn, well, I earn less than minimum wage doing the job that I do now. I'm not complaining. I absolutely love my job. If more people want to join Patreon, smash the like button to help my videos get seen by more people. I appreciate it. If you want to buy some merch, I appreciate it. But the point I'm saying is, I earn less than minimum wage doing what I do now, but I love my life. Before now, I was earning, well, minimum wage. And I hated my life in so strongly that I didn't really want to be here anymore. Uh, and I still deal with all of the mental issues, you know, anxiety and depression, all those sorts of things. And that's kind of why I want to talk about it. It's also because people with, you wouldn't imagine someone with anxiety and depression, which deals a lot of self-doubt, would have become a YouTuber and continued to push themselves through different things, through different skills. I know as a YouTuber, I'm not, it's not like I found no insult to them. It's not like I discovered that if I squish something with a hydraulic press, I just can keep repeating that process and keep squishing more things. I've tried different things and they're diverse and they're um, unconnected very often. And, and this is one of the problems I have as a creator is the fact that I am I div a diverse person. I am not specialised. I am a generalist. And I used to think that was not a good thing. Uh, and Adam Savage actually has talked a lot about this. And I think he's made me feel better about being a, a jack of all trades, as it were, rather than a master of one. But, you know, the saying jack of all trades, master of none... Though oftentimes, though oftentimes better than a master of one. I, I appreciate what's being said there and I do actually physically see it because if someone knows a job too well, you don't have other jobs to, to get ideas from. Uh, you only, you're only you working from the same toolkit. Whereas, for instance, you might be like, well, from a different job, this tool, it's not made for that, but it's going to do a good job for it. That's, that's what I thrive on. That's what my brain wants. I like challenges. I like pushing myself to learn new skills and I like creating things. You shouldn't be rash. You shouldn't go and jump into things without preparation. But I honestly, I'm telling you, prepare, learn, think about it. If you really want to do it, you're just going to have to go and do it. Don't wait for a signal. Don't wait for a time. I mean, the easiest way it can sometimes be is to give yourself a date. Like say, okay, in three months time, that's when this is going ahead. And then you've got a plan in, head, in your head. There's no reason for it. It's just you pick a date, but you stick to it. Uh, and it, as I say, it's going to take a lot of work. You. YouTube, for instance, I've been YouTube doing YouTube for 10 years, over 10 years, and my video upload rate is one video every 2.2 days for 10 years. Now, I've said this a few times, and honestly, when you see channels with huge staffs saying about how they've just reached their 1500th video and how insane it is, I'm like, well, that is a lot of videos for a YouTube channel. But there's 10 of you 
there's only one of me and there only ever has been. You know, I'm presenter, cameraman, editor, producer, I'm everything and I've done that much work and I don't know how exactly I've managed to do it. And the answer to it is I love what I do, which is why I work as hard and as long as I do. And I don't see it as work because I love it. It almost feels like, well, my work is my life. My life is my work. I love everything about what I'm doing now compared to before. But you do need to keep pushing forwards. And one of the things that I wanted to do uh, was possibly do some leather working, maybe sell some wallets in the future, maybe sell some belts and things. Maybe there's some other ideas I'm not talking about yet because I think they're really cool, but they're related to motorcycles. Um, I don't know if that's that's what I'm, you know, the end goal, but I am willing enough to have paid out about 400 quid or 500 quid for leather working tools on the hope that I can teach myself that skill well enough that I'll be able to make some things good enough that I will be not just good because I'm a YouTuber and someone wants to buy it because I made it and I'm selling it. Good enough that it's good compared to anyone else. That's where I've always wanted to be compared. I, I never want to be that like, oh, it's good for, for you know, a lot of us, sometimes a lot of bikers will say like, oh yeah, she rides really well for a girl. Don't minimize that or, you know, just it makes no difference. Uh, so don't minimize stuff is what I'm trying to say there. Don't Try, don't try and say, well, you know, it's good. I don't want good because of this. I want good compared to itself or, or, or a competitive thing. But when I was thinking about that, when I was trying to decide, like, I'm doing research, I'm looking at how, everything, how much everything's going to cost. Do I, do I really want to do this? Am I being dumb here? Am I just throwing money and time away? Apologies, that's the other thing about being self-employed. You won't sleep a lot. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's... Man, this is a hard video to get across because I, I want to express a feeling, a, a nugget of truth, which is just basically go for it, but be smart about it, but go for it. Don't wait for it. And I know that's just the classic thing everyone says in it. Don't wait for anything, just go for it. But it's actually true. It really is. The only thing that gets you from A to B is taking a step. And you at A would never believe that you could be you at B. And you at B couldn't believe that A, you took that step because it was so out of your character to take that step, but you only could become the, the B of you by taking that step. It's, it's, I know, I know, I know. They say that money doesn't buy you happiness and it's absolutely true. Money does not buy you happiness. A lack of money in this world now will bring much unhappiness. So having some money will bring happiness because without it, you will be very unhappy. And now when I say no money, I mean, if you haven't got anywhere to live, you haven't got food on the table, you haven't got clothes on your back, you know, that's a real problem. If you can eat food, have clothes, you're doing all right. Sure, you might want to earn more in the future, but to be happy is more valuable than money. Be prepared for a lot of work, be prepared for a lot of things you weren't prepared for, uh, and be ready to move on that. You know, like, don't, they say you shouldn't have a plan B because if you have a plan B, you don't work 100% on plan A. Uh, I agree with you in some context. In other contexts, you need three plans because if A doesn't go right, well, then you can work on B. And if B doesn't go work, you can write, work on C. Because one of the most painful things when you're doing a job or self-employed is downtime because you're waiting on other things. You always work in blocks of different things. So you can try and do this, but if this fails, okay, fine, I can move on to that job and do that job while I'm waiting for this thing to happen. Or like people who may do woodwork might do 10 sets of things glue all these up, go in and then do another set that you glued a couple of days before, then move back to it. Oh, well, the glue's not set properly. Okay, well, I'll leave that bit longer, but there's that other thing over there that I haven't done, so I'll go and do that. It's about always having something to do and always doing something. On average, for a lot of hours a day, and it ends up being putting you in the place you want to be. Generally, in my experience, that's the way it's worked. I've had failures, and failures are not failures. They are, I know people say, you know, failures are just learning things. No, they really are. You need, being self-employed or trying to learn a skill, is actually, the reality of it is failing enough times that you know how not to. That's how I like to put it. I mean, as I say, you can learn as much as you want to learn, and you can cross-apply cross, cross apply lots of methodology. But at the end of the day, you have to fail to learn the lessons. Um, brushing aluminium, that was one of the things. I taught myself how to brush aluminium. You make one mistake in brushing aluminium, one, 
it's all over. You either have to restart entirely or you're gonna have a lot of work to get down, get rid of the old marks, how to get new ones in. One mistake. And do you know how many times I made that mistake? Lots. And when I, and Reno, my other half, has seen this, when I make a mistake, I don't get mad because there's no point getting mad because that's not gonna speed up me getting the thing done. That's not going to improve my ability to pay attention and do the thing. It's just going to slow me down. It's about building methodology, plans, and a resilience of mind to keep moving forward and try and learn that next thing. Hopefully somewhere in there, there is some gems of information that might help you. Uh, and maybe this video can be that inspiring kick up the butt to go and do the thing you wanna do. Whatever that may be, you know, get a license, get a motorcycle. There's a lot of people who watch my videos who don't get bikes because they don't think they can do it. Um, go and do CBT, find out. What's the worst you're gonna lose? 120 quid? Sorry, kids screaming. Anyway, as I say, my story, I'm not aggrandizing my story, I'm just very happy with where I've come from and come to. I also realized that that wouldn't have been possible without the audience that have watched me over the years, the people who joined Patreon. And the point I joined, I made my Patreon. I'd gone from having some money in my back pocket from a crash, an accident I'd had, uh, and used that as a, as a, a way to be able to try and switch jobs and do this full time. I got down to a point that I had less than a month's rent left. And I was just, I didn't know what to do. And I decided to just start Patreon and put all of my effort into YouTube. And thankfully, thank God for the 0.3% people, you know, those people just changed my life because I was able to concentrate on YouTube immediately. I was able to not do the metal works, which gave me the time to do, the metal, uh, to do YouTube and push things further and further. And I think, <sighs> Sorry, yawned again. I think, um, sorry, yawned again. I think that I've improved things enough, really improved the videos to the point that people think it's worthwhile and people have stayed on Patreon for years and thank you so much. So as I say, I, it's, it's a tricky one because some people say that, you know, as a YouTuber, I'm just an e-beggar. I'm just this, I'm that. But stand-up comedian has a show, sells a DVD, sells a ticket, you know, they, you, you buy a DVD from a comedian, you pay what, 9 dollars 12 dollars get two hours of entertainment. My Patreon costs 15 pound a year and I make one video every 2.2 .2 days, on average. <laughs> Maybe a little bit less at the moment, but the point is like, people really don't want, that's, well, that's actually, no, oh, I'm gonna have to continue because this is an entire side of it. A lot of people will not want you to succeed at doing your thing. People will say, no, you can't quit that job because you've got to have another job lined up. Now that is true in ways, but at the same time, there is a lot of people who are stuck in places that they are in and they are very unhappy about it and they feel threatened by anyone who suggests that the only thing stopping them getting out of that situation is their own laziness. Um, I used to do lots of videos talking about anxiety, depression, and pushing yourself past things, and it, it, I've learned a lot of lessons. Like, I, humans can be very, very, very unpleasant things. Um, and there is a definite proportion of people who would rather see other people fail than inspire them to succeed because it will make them feel better about themselves that they haven't not done that thing. Uh, like some people who said that the Metalworks was a failure. Um, I never called it a failure. It was not a failure. I learned a lot of skills from it. I got tools. They all got covered in price. I got to work for a few years for myself experiencing those things. I learned all of those things. And I stopped because, well, one, I couldn't do YouTube and that at the same time. As I said, my workshop would have to get bigger, but also because it was kind of unrealistic to expect that to do that forever. But that's another thing. People seem to think that if you, if you try to invest into something, it should last forever. Like that's what you're gonna do from now on. The leatherworking stuff cost me 500 quid. All I have to do is make enough things to cover the costs of that and it's fine because I've paid money and learned a skill even if I only make 500 quid out of it. Now I know that if I make, if I get good at making wallets, well I can easily, easily cover that costs. Easily. But if I wasn't that good at it, there are things I could make that could probably help cover the costs, you know, because they're not so difficult. I just have to make more of them. Uh, or, or I can accept it as a, a lost leader, that I'm learning a skill, but maybe the skills I've learned here aren't going to help me in the future, but maybe the lessons I learn from the skills do. As I say, I've tried to stop talking three times now. I'm going to stop now. Just 
just be smart and for Christ's sake, just go and do what you do want to do because you only live once. And trust me, the older you get, the faster the years go. And I know I sound like an old man and oh, I'm only 36 years old. Yes, but seriously, there are so many things I wished I'd just gone and done in the past when I had the opportunities, but I held myself back waiting for something that was never going to arrive. You just have to do it. Goodbye.